far. Changing our scene to game number two, RNG versus IG. <gasps> it's a YouTube loading error. So RNG just got blown out by IG. I got dumpstered in game number one. So they must understand they have to show a lot more respect in laning phase. Rookie Cinder's not really the blue side ban here. They decide to go for the blue side um, Silas ban. First pick Lissandra taken away. Hmm. Interesting to see the first pick Silas. Sorry, the first pick Rek'Sai in this scenario. I think Rek'Sai gets a lot more respect in other regions than it does in Korea right now. I think this is a really strong pick. I guess they just want information, but it's at the cost of a lot of stuff. Like, you can take Callista Gallio here. Now, you might argue that Vayne is a really good pick into it, but just as Uzi found out recently, like, yes, on one level that's true. But yeah, it's, I think it's very, very risky, and there's not necessarily that many other top laners, sorry, that many uh, supports that you like in this scenario, but they're leaving themselves open for strongest possible skirmishing jungler, and now theoretically counter pick bot lane is possible. So Clistic Galio, as you would expect, taken. This is interesting, RNG taking the Syndra. Definitely a rookie favorite. I imagine rookie would have taken it and double banned against it, but they're gonna take Syndra in this spot, that's cool. And they're gonna actually hold their support bit. I guess there's a chance that Rookie might be playing Galia. They just take Kaisa straight up. So they don't take Vayne. They go pretty respectfully. So they don't even get the the like the, the positive part of the uh Vayne versus uh Callista matchup. And they just go straight Kaisa. This is interesting in this case. Vayne was banned. Good call. I didn't even notice. But Vayne's banned in this case, so that makes me feel better about IG's side of the draft, because they took Callista Galio. The Gallo support to me should have been first pick, right? Because with Vayne banned, giving an entire bot lane on red side, especially one as powerful as Clista Gallio, seems like too much. They just take Jarvan first round here. I think that's fine. Getting to ban some lane counters now. So it's going to take down Morgana as a potential support for the Kai'Sa. And then Thresh as well. So playmaking and also the Black Shield, for what looks like it's going to be a teamfight wombo comp from IG. RNG haven't shown anything. So you're looking for top lane, and I guess mid lane? You're going to have to show something, because there's a lot of flex going on the side of IG. It's going to draft the Zoe. Shows that Galio is not a flex pick. Zoe into Syndra is a good tent. It's a good matchup for Syndra, but it's not an unwinnable one for the Zoe with jungle assistance. So a lot of this depends on how much backup you get from Jarvan. I think in a kind of organic lane, you definitely like the Syndra side of the matchup. So you look at what's open. Um, I guess you could take Alistair if you want an engaged support, but you kind of can get away with not an engaged support because you know the enemy is going to be engaging for you. You don't feel great about it because you don't have any backline access. And from behind, you get poked out super hard by Zoe because no one here can actually impact Zoe's positioning. But you know Callista's going in. You know Galio and Jarvan's going in. I want to see what RNG's final pick is. They have, they have no backline access, a kite back comp that kind of needs to get ahead to do well. I think Urgot would be bizarre here. Um, just because the tie's in the lineup. I think if it's Amazing J... You take Urgot, and then your comp becomes catch someone who dives in too aggressively and then win the team fight with Urgot ult. Like, it's quite a conditional, but it's a possibility. Instead, they just go straight into the laning power of Ryze. And there's just not a lot to challenge a top lane Ryze in the draft with everything that's bad. Jace is gone. Aurelia Kali gone. Lissandra top, obviously not a thing, because that's banned too. You can take Rise, but this is a losing top lane matchup. And there's a lot has changed in this draft. I think um, RNG, even though we liked where IG started, I think RNG had been pretty smart about where they took their wins and losses. They took their losses in the bot lane, but they kind of staggered it over multiple rounds in the Alistair's band as well. Shout out to Tradium. I just can't read anymore. Um, and 
the Tom Kench Kaisa is unlikely to die, but it's not going to be in a great spot in terms of 2v2. Meanwhile, Ryze beats Vlad. Uh, Syndra should have priority in um, the Zoe matchup until a turning point, which is usually a gank or maybe just Ludens and hitting some pretty chance skill shots. And you definitely take Rek'Sai in the jungle, so over the Jarva in terms of skirmishing. So, interesting. This is an interesting draft here where I think IG... RNG actually got way more than they have in the last two drafts I've seen, the BLG draft into this one. This is a lot less greedy than a lot of RNG drafts, um, which I think is good to see. It's a bit of skipping here. It takes a while to get into game. So definitely RNG early into IG late is kind of where I, I look at in this game. Um, because RNG have very nice lanes here. Ryze versus Vlad and Syndra versus the Zoe. With the benefit of the strongest skirmishing jungle. You don't get better than the Rek'Sai when it comes to early skirmishing. Conqueror choice here is interesting. It feels like LPL is still on the Conqueror hype train even after... Especially LEC has gone way into domination... We've seen Electrocute, we've seen Hail of Blades on the Rek'Sai. Kind of surprising to see Conqueror still a kind of standby in this case. But, yeah, notable regardless. So Rek'Sai are right into Krugs. It's kind of a Karsa path. He really likes going super defensive on his path. In this game, I definitely don't agree. Like, I feel like he can smash and grab for Scuttles. So he's going red Krugs. He's going full clear bot side. That's a kind of a Zac path more commonly. Now, Rek'Sai does Krugs really fast. So it's not the same as Zac where you're like, well, I won't die on a camp because of my passive. And he is jungling around guaranteed pressure in the Rise versus Vlad matchup in the mid lane. So you can get away with this. I wonder how much it means, though. I guess there's a small chance you... Escape vision completely on the top side. It might time out by the time you get there. He's going to be spotted. And was actually able to ping out the end of the ward here. Meanwhile, this is going to be Ning focusing on big camps. Rex has one of the few junglers who can go machete and actually have a happy time with Raptors. Because she has so much AoE clear in the, in the side anyway. It's a question about what the little bars are next to the... Uh, the players. Um, it's to do with fan votes and donations and other kind of quirks of the Chinese broadcast rather than anything to do with the actual in-game. This is pinged out by Ning. Like, he's pretty aware that his Krugs are at risk here. Gets positioning information on Rek'Sai for the second most recent time. This is going to be many more camps available. So that's the advantage that RNG have got is even though there's no answering Krugs for Ning if he was bot side. Now he's top side anyway, so it doesn't matter. But there's no answering Krugs. The Royal Bandit Krugs don't come for a little while. About a minute into this game. And there's still three camps for Kosta to pick up. So Jarvan, who always has to be more situational about which jungle paths he takes, is kind of losing the maximum here. And he's a jungler you don't mind leaving a little Raptor up. He's not picked for his clear. But he also, the team drafted weaker lanes around it. So because the lanes aren't in the same spot they were previously, you can see that Jarvan has a lot less options than he did in the previous game. So there is a way to stabilize this matchup, the Rise versus Vlad matchup, but it sets behind your timings. It's, uh, if you go into Spectre's Cal Mercs, you can then from there um, build normal build and actually catch up in terms of being able to win lane trades. If you don't build magic resist in this lane, it takes so long for your actual sustain to be relevant. It's not just level 9 for more healing. You need level 9 and then some because Rise also. Every time you on command walk up for a Q, he can walk up for EQW trades. So because of that, you kind of need the Spectre's Cow to stabilize the lane, but it then in team fights you don't have the AP stacking, you don't have the CDR stacking in lane either. So there's a lot more of a trade-off here. Unless you're just willing to hang back as the Vladimir 
you need to respect that uh, the Rise is a really good matchup into you. So there wasn't really any perfect choice for the Shy, and he tries to make a team comp decision in going into the Rise. There was a time in his career where I think that was a real struggle for him, like when he needed to pay tanks. I think he had more down games than up games, and that's why Duke would usually feel strong. But he's taking a self-counter pick here with the hope that He'll just be able to breathe easy and this is a tie won't get a lot of resources and won't grow a lead. Like definitely with Amazing J on the rise side here, you feel a lot safer if you're the shy, but with Zatai here, there's a lot more inherent pressure. Rookie doing good in terms of CS, but only around level six is there supreme pressure. So troll seeing all these evolutions of tiers and stuff, the advertising stuff that's going on. Also came in through two control wards, so no information here, but Jackie Love and Bowland should know to play very defensively. It's very hard to make anything happen here. Like you need like a lot of flashes used to threaten anything. It's Tom Kench, Kaisa, and Rexai. Only gap close of those three champions is the uh, the borrowing pre level six. So because of that, Jackie Love does take a lot of damage though. Like that part, you feel good about. There's no teleport onto Jackie Love, so it's just free pressure. Guarantees good back timings, back timing advantage to RNG from Rexai going there, and Rexai had nowhere else to hit on the map. So all in all, the right use of time. A lot more ordered and slow. You'll notice. We're not getting too. Um, too much excitement in this early game. So Rookie walks up here for a trouble bubble with no deep vision at all. I guess he's just poking in terms of lane access. It's actually pretty scary to take. Man, he's good though. He has to flash out. Like This is definitely a problem of Rookie's creation, but you do appreciate the fact that he was able to dodge the E and the W. Now, he still shouldn't have walked up. Like, he didn't need to get his, I assume, like, I don't even know what he would have gotten there. I guess he could have got Mana Flow Ban cashed in, but that poke was never going to be high damage. The sidesteps are sick, but uh, I think the takeaway messages don't do that, Rookie, because that was his real flash. So RNG really want Rift Herald this game. Like, they're getting dumpstered top lane. As you'd expect. Mid lane just flashed. Like IG is like the polar opposite of their position in the previous game where they had so many good lanes to jungle around. Because even bot lane after getting bullied a bit is CS for CS. Okay, coming up and contest blue buff. Something a lot easier for this lineup to do. I assume that was just a reset when IG looked like they were going to be in position to take the uh, blue buff. Otherwise, I assume that wasn't just a bad attempt at a steal. Matchup sucks for the shy. Nothing he can do. Decided not to build for lane. Again, I think he goes back to just Cal here. Pros don't want to do it anymore because everyone's just so focused on getting all the CDR to be able to get your combos to feel really good. But I'm... I'm skeptical that's the right way to play this matchup. I feel like the old analysis is still relevant, even if there's more CDR in the game than ever before. Definitely a draw tech inspiration from. You've seen how much more short-circuited IG is in the second game. Like, they haven't been able to do anything on the level of what they pulled off in the previous game. And again, for IG, we're waiting for the Shy to turn on. We know that's going to be very late. He's taking sucky trades. Nothing he can do. Their best hope is to find a fight where they can really abuse Callista as a champion, but that's going to be tricky to do. I think gank pressure onto the rise is very minimal. His flash is still up. Rookie hitting Ludens might be relevant, but his damage items are coming in second, so... IG are waving that white flag we don't usually see. Aha! This is good gank. Really good gank. 
So, what happens here? A lot of Zoe players have that lust to go for the value trades. And can you think of a more obvious value trade than Paul will jump in for 50 mana, shoot someone with your GLP, and get a heal. So even if you get a slight, you know, even if you get one Q back on you, you're fine. You got the heal, right? This is such a standard Zoe play, and that's what Karsa and Jahu are waiting for. Really well played here. Too greedy from Rookie, like he should not be making that play categorically when his flash is down. But, really good capitalization from RNG. Like, that is just something that you do in solo queue. It's one of those just things you go to. He comes in, puts out the W. Amusingly, the timing doesn't work out, so he never even gets the heal. But, uh, yeah. The setup there was about him greeting for the heal. It was still the obvious play they were trying to make. The layering is off, but uh, the kill and then the Rift Herald that we already talked about around that rise pressure. This is really nicely played by RNG, top side. So let's think about what happens if you're Ning. Because I'm not that interested in what I IG is doing, RNG is doing right now. It's obvious. You just go take the free Rift Herald. Like, there's no reason not to. The enemy's in base. The top side has pressure. It's 10 minutes 50. I'm more interested in the, I control nothing as Jarvan. Like, Jarvan has no map control here. How does Ning make this play? He walks on a control ward. <coughs> He's spotted by it. He clears that. He just goes bot lane. Like, this is a... Again, consider, he hasn't got any jungle camps up. So, there's nowhere for him to go. He can't go to Rift Herald. There's no priority there. He needs to make a gank somewhere. So, he goes bot lane. Ooh, hate to see it from Balan. His flash is up, so there's... I don't think anything really changes. Maybe you save Cataclysm. But they get a kill, and this is... The decision is made here, and it's... Rek'Sai's topside, Ryze's topside with no teleport. Let's go bot lane and try to make something happen. And it will be 3v2. It'll probably be scouted, but it's going to be an outnumbering. And the outnumbering works. You know, it's not the cleanest, but... Yeah, interesting to see. Someone asked, why does Karsa take the second blue buff even on Rek'Sai and Lee Sin? It might just be an experience thing. I didn't see when the second blue buff was taken. Did he take the blue buff? No, he didn't take the blue buff. I don't I don't know the context for your question then. Regardless, nice play from IG trying to find something well, with nothing on. The shy is just a smash up, man. Here here's my takeaway is that the shy is trying to build his normal items to try to hit them a few minutes late. And still be able to hit a team fight without dying. And you know what? The soul of that, he's following. However, he's down 37 CS and his top lane is vacant. He might as well be Nasus in this lane. He has no lane presence. Like, this is not, like, you can't do this. They picked Flat in to rise. And then they're like, well, this sucks. And I think this is. I don't think you can do this. Like, I think this approach is just categorically wrong. Like, you're amplifying your loss even though you're not dying and theoretically you didn't spend 1,200 gold on a cow. Like, I just don't see it. I think it's just straight up wrong from the shy. It's not achieving anything. Rookie Redemption comes in. Wait, what happened here? Oh, man.
Jesus. Well, he just got owned. When you see those moments in live as a caster, you want to use terms like you want to use expletives, right? Because he just fucked him there, man. Like he just punked him so hard. But well, you can't use those words in casts. Oh, that was a pretty nice disengage. Let's watch that again. So IG. Let's watch this play again. So around the scene of the crime with the enemy jungler dying, it makes sense to go for an ocean drake's first spawn of the game. No one's taken a drake earlier. RNG should have been getting freebie drakes, but they didn't care about ocean. So IG stay on the drake. They problem solve this one pretty well, right? The shy actually completely misplays that. Where was he for the teleport? Uh, the Shy misreads this completely. It doesn't matter because he was going to lose his turret anyway. Notable though. The Shy not Duke in terms of teleporting. That much is clear. Ugh. Outrageous. Good job, Rocky. And in a moment like that, this game was way out of their control. And actually, IG are a little bit frustrated because like, really? Infernal? When we're still not ready to fight? That's not ideal. But they feel almost bad taking that one. Q hits, Q2 hits. That was the only empowered Q so far. Ah, oh, look at this, man. So let's get this play on screen right here. Empowered Q hits, right? You saw the 283. Watch from here. E hits. Jukes the first Q and then pulls the second one. You hate to see it if you're a Zatai. You just got owned. Oh, in a counter matchup to down 50 CS. You hate to see it, man. You can't miss those cues. Zatai's like, why did I unretire? Damn it! Have you noticed how these fights are about like watching cool outplays rather than macro? Ah, beautiful. LPL, baby. And then you think about the map state here. Our IG have rescued so much. No longer is top an island. And you got a Drake. And you got a bit of control back. And like, there's something for the enemy to think about. Before, everything was just being surgically put together on the side of RNG. Ning trying to come up with creative ways to play a make, but it was a good defensive ward there that should be scouted. Interesting to see Syndra and Rex I go back topside. I don't really know what this does. I guess Rift Herald. That's fine. I think with the Rift Herald that makes some sense. He needs somewhere to go. They don't get the turret though, so it's like a lot of time spent. And the reason why I say that is that IG, RNG still control the pace of the game. And their duo lane's getting denied in that play compared to just the shy on top side. I think it's usually going to be the case. They're going to play around Uzi in a play like that. But with the spinning of the map, not getting the turret there, that's pretty significant. We're going to watch the replay of this one.
Good job, the shy. You're good at video games. That's for sure. IG are able to walk up in a scenario like this. Like if RNG had defended bot side instead of trying to make the Rift Herald play top side, there wouldn't have been a map state like this where actually IG can walk up with Zoe and actually feel pretty good about it. Like they're pretty able to walk up here and they're not going to get the turret because the minion wave is not the biggest, but they actually have less map pressure on them this game. Like it feels like RNG's map pressure at 16 minutes compared to IG's in game number one with similar kind of agency leads is pretty significantly less. And that makes sense. RNG aren't a team that's great at playing proactive. So they're very much kind of the children of their time, you know? If they're from the 90s from Britain, they like Spice Girls, and you just have to say, well, that was the 90s. So it's kind of what RNG's macro is like when it comes to trying to play aggressive macro in this case. Now, the Infernal Spawn means that, again, IG have some positioning on this. Because RNG didn't fight for it, they tried to get the inner turret topside. Where are we at? Let's think about where we're at in terms of tools. Shy has to run down. He doesn't got teleport. Neither does this die. They'll both be there. When it comes to how team fights work for IG in a good way, they don't really have the items to make it happen. They need a trouble bubble to hit. Like the AOE Wombo Fest doesn't really work when you just have Blade and then like Proto Belt. Now there's a chance that with Galio, I think Galio is actually the real star here because you can control so much space with the taunt. Big things can happen. The other thing is that RNG just want to have a 2v, a 2v1. They just want to take down someone in CC duration. Sky of the Week or a Rise route hits, and then Rek'Sai, Syndra, and Rise guarantee one person dies instantly. It doesn't matter who it is. Balan. He's like, please die! Eventually they get the kill. I feel like RNG found the trickiest way to make this one team fight happen. Now, this is a long fight, right? The way I look at RNG, no one is tanky to Ryze, um, Rek'Sai, and Syndra. Two out of three of those champions using their full rotation kills someone. So I think it's much easier just to play pick on the front person, whoever it is. Balan, if Balan dies first, you feel so good about it. And you don't necessarily have to walk into taunt range because you have Ryze and Syndra that outrange him. So you watch how the play starts. It starts with Jahu really wanting to get in there. Like he just, like how does this play actually work? I'm going to slow it down. How many spheres does he even have on the ground? 1Q, W, R. And that's, you know, he obviously doesn't hit anything, but it usually doesn't matter. It's only level 10 on Jackie Love. But he gives up his whole health bar to try to make that happen, and also the positioning of his team. Because from there, when Jahu just goes Rambo in the front line, Balan gets a really easy ability to control space, and then Cinder Hulk Jarvan jumps in and controls space. Like, here's what I'll say. Yes, you jump in as Jahu and almost kill one person, but let's look at how much damage the other people do. Rek'Sai has Warrior in chat, and as we know, it's a 5.2 AD ratio, so really powerful, even with only one item. The Rise is actually super huge. He has the ability to front line, and he also has early pen. How much damage does Ryze get off in this fight? So he realm warps. I don't know who he's trying to realm warp to the back line. It ends up being the Kai'Sa. And then Zatai actually can do no damage at all. And RNG have so much to work with in this fight. They should easily win it. It's when they are stronger as a five-man unit. And they almost find a way to throw this fight. Really, it's really messy. Because um, now you're fighting in like terrain when no one really has vision. Like, IG doesn't know that for sure, but Rookie has space on the enemy. 
I feel this is a comp you should never actually have a front line on, and honestly, being able to juke through red buff is kind of like having a tank in front of you if you're a Zoe, because you can obviously poke damage through the uh, the walls. There's so much safety for IG. This should never be. This should be just a wipe, an easy wipe, and it ends up being a very competitive wipe. And they still win it to RNG, but it should have been a lot better. Like, I look at that, and I'm like, your execution there actually wasn't very good. Someone asked about what the Shy was doing here. I actually missed the ulti. Yeah, he only hits ult on uh, one person. Like the Shy misses the ult, I think the rest of the fight just Annoying the tie out isn't the worst use of his time, but in general, this fight I think is really poorly fought by RNG. Like Zhao Hu had everything up and jumped in to almost kill Jackie Love. I feel like in a different game when Jackie Love has lots of kills, like Jackie Love didn't even have Hurricane. Like if this is Hurricane, Blade Rune King, three kills, like pretty fed. Clista, you say, well, I was 100 HP off, whatever. But summon a healers up. He dives in with a very nice one line power spike and just kind of dies and creates really bad positioning. Like, I think this was a an under, undercooked idea from RNG. They win it, but I'm not interested in being results orientated about that. Like, that should have been way better. Jackie Love's got his core, but he doesn't actually have the ability to get the fights that play towards his items. Like, RNG win in the side lanes pretty hard. Most of the assignments here that Zoe doesn't have any real way to deal with. So Zoe's counter-rotating and thus losing CS for it. This is a nice moment. As IG actually get to walk through control wards and get a chunk on mid, but killing mid is way harder. Oh, Jackie Love gets a really good fight here for the start of it. Zatai actually managed to get a Realm Warp flank off. He feels so good about it. He just murders Jackie Love in the back line. Two Qs hit. Didn't miss any of them. M murders Jackie Love, I should say. That was really well done by Zatai. They had a control in the brush, but I guess they weren't looking at the Realm Warp on the way. And they ended up getting flanked by Zatai. Really well done by him. He wins them that fight, because if you consider how this fight starts, remember they're like, oh, they got team fight items onto... Uh, Jackie Love, and he just wants, you know, a pile in team fight where he can just rend for days. It looked like they were going to have that, but he just gets assassinated by Zatai for free. And then it doesn't matter what items anyone else has at the end of the day. There's no way to win this fight. Shout out to Zatai. He missed the 1v1 on top side, but this one he made them pay. We played really well there. They don't actually have. Control ward anyone who's alive. They only get the information now that it's warded, but you know the enemy smite can't be there. Wait. I guess there's no smite on RNG either. I wonder if IG knew that. I thought they would steal this one. Watch this. Ming stands in front of it. Big shout out to him. They're very lucky that uh, apparently it doesn't arm onto Barons in like a, some sort of generous AOE like it does onto Champions. Otherwise, it could have been a stolen Baron there. Should they be doing something different here is a question. Jiaohu doesn't have Flash. Zatai is the only person who can go over, but he's also tanking the Baron. They don't really have too many ways to contest the back of the pit here. I know the enemy has no smite, so it's probably fine. 
I mean, you know, the Baron falls to what, 73 HP? 43 HP. Ends up being fortunate. RNG rolling the dice. I would say overall, making the Baron finish call there is wrong purely because I think that you could have taken a sharp and recreated that for at least another 10 minutes before the scaling from the Vlad takes over. But because they're a team that can't gets outscaled and because of how strong they feel they are right now, it's not categorically wrong. I think it's just pretty desperation when a lot of the next five to eight minutes suits you pretty fine. So it's kind of my read on it, but I understand why teams, when they know they get outscaled, make plays like that. Rise is a, just a monster in this game. They also picked up three stopwatches from that fight. Vlad, as you can see, getting close and close to being team fight ready, but he's one and a half items. Like he, he needs a death cap. If there's a death cap there, then he just does his job alone, right? Cool lane assignments here. You'll notice it's Jiaohu and Ming in mid lane. Banshee Veil vale on Jiaohu and Ming next to him with summoners. And then three members bot lane, including the AD carry. So it's actually not Ming and Uzi together. And this is a really smart lane assignment. The only area they don't control is enemy red side, which just means Jarvan will come from there. And that's why you need Ming in this group. So the configuration of Ming and Jiahu here, I think is actually really, really smart when it comes to lane assignments. They get two ults out of it as well. That's a really nice 200 IQ play from RNG in terms of lane assignments there. So if you're going to ask the question, why not Uzi and Ming mid lane? Um, it's because Zhaohu actually has um, kind of a safer ability to chip around and poke anyone under the turret. He has Banshee Veil vale up so he doesn't take threat from Trouble Bubble. He might actually have a longer attack range as well. What is Syndra's attack range? I'm going to take this chance to look it up. Syndra attack range. All right, let's get the confirmation on this. I don't want to give you guys false information. 550, 520. It has 25 more range as well. So I think for multiple different reasons, that's actually really smart to um, go for that particular lane assignment. And also because you control, um, I'll pause it again. Because once again, you control the enemy red side jungle. Because you know Jarvan, so enemy blue side jungle, you know that Jarvan's an enemy red side jungle is going to make a collapse play onto mid. If Kaisa's bot lane as that happens and misses out on the play, there's more chance you take two turrets because Kaisa doesn't have to worry about the Jarvan getting access to her because she has to go through, he would have to go through the blue side jungle they control as well. So just being geographically further away from the threat of the Jarvan is also good for Uzi. I looked it up, by the way, guys. It's 525 Kaisa, 550 Syndra. So really good lane assignment from RNG. That's cool to see. Sort of thing I wouldn't think about, but on a VOD review, it's easy to review. Take a lot of free resources here. IG going to find it tricky to play out their comp from now. They kind of need the Shy to pick up farm over and above anyone else. I don't think the next item for Jackie Love matters. So the Shy should probably be running between minion waves and picking up all the CS. Obviously, more damage onto Zoe is nice, but if you choose one person, it's the Shy. Shy is a death cap away from being online. It seems like he has to go Banshee Veil vale against uh, Rise Syndra, which... Get when you're behind, I think it's a requirement. From ahead, I think it's optional, which sounds weird, but if you have map control and you're thinking about getting Hemoplague maximum damage, you definitely go death cap third. But when you're behind in terms of map control and you can't even know for sure whether you'll be able to face check Baron, if you don't have the Banshee Veil, vale, then you can struggle. It might even be considering Void Staff here as well. You know, you got the amp term in, but it could just be a power buy. Against double AP, I, 
I think Banshee Veil is the right way to go. I didn't see how much magic resistance that. There's more Malmordius in Banshee Veil, so maybe you go Void Staff anyway and leave your options open. But definitely can't go for max damage as you might want to with something like a Death Cap, which lets you clear minion waves and also enemy champion health bars at the same time. There's a point about Jahu giving up blue. Uh, I assume to Uzi. Uzi very often takes both buffs at times. You can take the blue buff here. But Uzi is definitely an AD carry that likes to take both buffs where possible. There's not a lot of AD carries to get away with it, but Uzi, of course, you know. So RNG, IG have been able to get some vision around Baron. So while this Baron is not scouted by them, it's actually pretty decently looked over. Um, when it comes to a red side defense. But, Rise is split pushing. Vladimir not being at the Baron is way more important than Rise not being at the Baron. It's quite bold a bolder call from RNG because uh, there's a teleport disadvantage on the Rise. That's why you see RNG pulling away because they actually don't have the ability to fully pincer in this case. It's still a lot of time, too. That's like two minutes worth of uh, timer here. That's why you see the hard engage happening. But Ryze keeps running at Vlad, so Vlad hasn't been able to TP. So this is 4v4. Yeah, Ryze being able to buy Vlad's time there actually was a pretty bold gambit, but it definitely worked out. How does this all start? So it's Ming and Uzi in the mid lane. Jahu and Karsa are as a duo, but with Rise in interrupt range of Vladimir. That's what you need to know about this play. IG try to chase forward for damage. Remember, they have no vision behind them, so their threat has to be on just who they can see. They use everything on trying to kill Jahu. He has stasis. They bought snowball stasis before and that means that uzi can just around the back line find a lot of free damage this is ig trying to make something out of a bad situation they don't know have control they're getting split pushed down the shy doesn't have a teleport ward but you think about what the shy could have done here to stop this because he of course has hemo plague there's no real time where he could have channeled a teleport and make something happen. So it's just IG trying to see her or kill her and get something for free. They hoped it would be Jahu. But Jahu has a stasis up. So not possible. RNG take free objectives. You see the replay. Again, see her or kill her. They can't get Vlad there. They just try to chase on Jahu. If there's no stasis, you probably kill him. There's a stasis, so you don't. And from there, IG just are going to find it really hard to get anywhere near the Baron again. And, you know, sins of the early game. So far, the team that took the early game lead is getting the most. Rookie goes for a walk. They're losing in both areas. Like they're, they're slightly up in this team fight, And I say slightly because Uzi is completely under no threat. And they're getting split pushed all the way in their base. Well, I think RNG made a very smart call. They started split pushing with Ryze without his teleport, right? As Zatai actually lives through that, 67 HP. But they actually played it pretty respectfully. They never started the Baron, so they were never under any health bar disadvantage around the Baron. And then, from there, they made the very smart call of never allow it to be about a teleport. Ryze can always run at Vlad, and Vlad can't do anything in terms of the 1v1, he never outscales um, Rise in terms of 1v1. So keeping him honest in the side lane meant that Vlad never got there and any of our analysis around outscale just isn't relevant because it was outscale if Vlad gets in there and Hemo plagues. He, it was Vlad's impact on a Syndra, Vlad's impact on short range AD carries that was going to be the reason that uh, IG won a team fight. 
that could never happen because he was always so well kept. So credit to Zatai after getting punked in the 1v1 to have the confidence to step up. There's no... It's important to note there's no time where Vlad outscales Rise in the 1v1. It just doesn't happen. Um, and he understood his win condition. He stuck to it. I think that was overall a really good closeout from RNG because it never became about out team fight the Vlad because the Vlad never got to a team fight. So I think that was overall pretty well played to close it. Not a perfect game. And definitely RNG in the aggressor role, you know, when they're given the sharp stick and said, go kill some people. They're not as good at doing that as IG is, but RNG still have some pretty solid shot calling like we're seeing at the end here that I think IG would not have done the same thing. So because of that, I commend RNG because I think many teams in RNG's shoes around 25, 28 minutes take another 15 minutes to close this game. Maybe two Barons or an Elder getting on the Rift instead of being able to close it at 33. So pretty well done there from the side of RNG. And that means... After a short break, we got one more game tonight, guys. One more game, so we're going to take a short break. Um, I'll come back and read over subscribers and donations and take a couple of questions. And then final game of the night, fifth game of the night, will be IG versus RNG Game 3. So thank you very much for watching my Game 2 review, and we'll be back very shortly. <laughs> 